Hi, good evening. This is Neil Yon. This is the TaxJournal.com, and this is for purposes of accounting 452. Uh, this is going to be a brief illustration on how to compute the estate tax, and let's start off with the following. The estate taxes entails the collection of all the assets of an individual and what they own. And mind you, when I say estate tax, I'm referencing the federal estate tax, so we take the gross estate, and what is that governed by? That's governed under sections 2031 through 2046 of the Internal Revenue Code. And as an example, 2036 governs uh, life estates, 2033 is your catch-all, 2038 is retention or reversions of um, powers or interest, uh, 2040 relates to joint property. Uh, there's a whole host of various subsections, but with that said, that will give you then what's collectively your assets or your gross estate. And then you say, okay, once we calculate the gross estate, and let's say after computing Neil's estate, he passes away in 2008 and he's got a $5 million estate. And you say, okay, we now know uh, what the... Uh, gross estate is, now what are we going to do? Well, it's really a rather simplistic formula. We're then going to subtract expenses and debts, um, also any taxes, that's governed under 2053 of the code, uh, charitable bequest, which is governed under section 2055, meritable, <laughs> that's, that's really good, the meritable deduction, that's not what it is, it's the marital. The marital deduction, and what is the marital deduction? Well, let's say of my $5 million of assets after we took into account expenses and charitable deductions, I was still left with $4 million. If I left that all that $4 million to my wife, in fact, there would be no taxable estate because of the marital deduction. Congress has been kind enough to draft within the Internal Revenue Code what is called 20, Section 2056 and 2056 Cap A, Cap A, it's a particular type of trust that it talks about, but that's where all the balance of Neil's assets are left to his spouse, and therefore the IRS is kind enough to say, okay, Neil, we're not going to tax your estate on your passing, but when your wife passes, we will then tax those assets. Um, in the event that I was not married, I would not obviously have a marital deduction, and if I had a million dollars worth of expenses and debts, and whatever I excluded from this, my state death taxes, let's say at the end of the day I was left with a $4 million state. Well, you say, okay, Neil passed away in the year 2008. What is the unified credit in 2008? Well, it's $2 million. And so, and the unified credit is the... Um, credit that Congress was kind enough to grant to us that increases to 3.5 million in 2009. In 2010 it phases out. You'll remember that schedule on one of the other videos. That is the unified credit. So let's go back to this taxable estate of 4 million. If we have a unified credit of 2, that reduces Neil's taxable estate down to 2 million. And you say, okay, well what is the estate tax then on 2 million dollars? Well, it's roughly going to be just under 50%, so we're likely in the neighborhood of around a, a little under a million dollars of estate taxes to be paid. One of the things that I want at least to make sure that uh, you note is there's a key difference here. The marital deduction and whatever the funding formula that I might utilize for purposes of taking care of my own unified credit. That is a separate video slide or video presentation, but at minimum this at least gives you a basic illustration of how the estate tax is computed. I'll tie it in later to how the gift tax is, um, the gift tax actually relates to the estate tax and the best way to do that is to show prior gifts paid. Uh, we won't do that today but thank you.